Electricity generation costs would have risen by 50% more in Australia had Australia stuck with coal and gas only. This is actually not an opinion piece. This is from an economics professor looking at the data. And it shows why America's electricity costs have doubled in the past 12 months, but Australia's have not. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. YouTube's new algorithm means that you're often not getting all of our videos in your feed. There's 7,500. I'm pretty sure you're probably not seeing a lot of them. In the description, there is a link to our newsletter. Click on that and you can get an update every day of all the latest news in the electric car industry. Griffith University experts revealed the 30% increase in consumer power bills since 2021, so over the last four years, would have been much, much worse under a fossil fuel only scenario. The cost of generating electricity would be up to 50% higher today if Australia had relied solely on coal and gas instead of pursuing renewable energy according to new analysis. Now, amazingly, it's normally the transition period where you've got to pay more. And you do. Australia has paid more for the transition period to move away from one energy source to another. You've got to build out the actual infrastructure and it costs money. It takes time. It takes a lot of effort that won't have to be put in in future. So the truth is power prices in Australia will actually decline over the next 10 years. But right-leaning politicians and climate deniers have seized on the 30% increase in electricity bills over the past four years to call for new coal-fired power plants to replace renewable projects, claiming it will bring down their energy bills. Now, of course, these people... Uh, don't understand that coal power plants, well, aside from many negatives, actually will increase costs. And, well, they're incredibly bad for human health as well. To interrogate those claims, Paul Simshauser and Joel Gilmore from Griffith University Center for Applied Energy Economics and Policy Research, they don't have any connections to either side of government, they modelled a counterfactual scenario where resource-rich Queensland had ignored the global push towards net zero and climate science and instead pursued an electricity grid based on fossil fuels from 2005, when coal and gas were definitely the lowest cost technologies. Solar and batteries, very expensive, and even wind as well, very expensive in 2005 in comparison to fossil fuels. 20 years later, the script has flipped. Solar and batteries are the cheapest form of electricity in nearly every country around the world. Simshauser and Gilmore concluded that soaring commodity prices, escalating costs associated with building new power plants, and major advances in clean energy technology means that coal can no longer claim to be the cheap energy source it once was. Their modeling said the cost of generating electricity would be as much as 50% higher today if Australia had relied solely on coal and gas instead of pursuing renewables, highlighting that abandoning green energy would lead to higher rather than lower power bills. And this is exactly what uh, Oxford University said as well. When they had 50 different economists examine the numbers, they said, if the world moves to renewables faster, speeds up our time frame, will save $10 trillion, enormous figures. In results, they said were applicable to the rest of the East Coast states in Australia. The renewable scenario produced an average wholesale price of $99.70 per megawatt hour, in line with the 93 to 103 range predicted for Queensland over the coming three years based on futures pricing. The average cost for an all coal or all gas power grid in contrast, was more than $150 per megawatt hour. Much more expensive. Look at the difference. $99 versus more than $150. And we don't even know exactly what it is above $150. It could be, it really kind of depends on the cost of coal, which fluctuates. But other factors don't change. Keeping coal power plants on costs a lot of money. You can't turn them off. You can't react to demand. The way a battery can just react to demand and send out power when you need it, you can't do that with a coal power plant. And obviously, this ignores the damage to the environment from carbon emissions associated with burning fossil fuels as well. The Guardian says that the authors say that claims 
energy used to be cheaper to produce are right. Coal-fired power in 2005 cost $89 per megawatt hour in today's dollars after accounting for inflation. So it was slightly cheaper than renewables are today. The report assumed new coal-fired power stations would need to be built to replace the aging, decrepit fleet in Australia over the next two decades and noted that the cost of constructing and financing these stations had increased by multiple times the rate of inflation. The analysis included the construction and transmission costs of the modelled renewable energy build-out. Simshauser is an economics professor and a member of the University of Cambridge's Energy Policy Research Group and recently resigned as CEO of PowerLink Queensland, a state-owned power transmission company. You can clearly see here that um, this wasn't paid for by either side of government. Joel Gilmore is an associate professor at Griffith University as well as a general manager of regulation and policy at renewable power firm Ibadola and a councillor of the Climate Council. The report's conclusions were emblematic of why private investors, private investors, not government, have poured tens of billions of dollars into private investment in renewable projects in Australia over the past five to six years. They weren't forced to do this. I mean, they weren't forced to do this and they poured in tens of billions of dollars into renewable energy projects in Australia. Have a think about why that might be. Forecasts that power price would fall thanks to the take-up of renewables, most notably Anthony Albanese's prediction before the 2022 election that electricity bills would be $275 lower, were wrong. And they helped fuel claims that a simple fix to higher prices was a return to fossil fuel energy. But Albanese wasn't wrong in the long term. He was just wrong in the short term. The transition period takes time. It takes five to 10 years. But electricity prices will unquestionably be cheaper than what they were in 2005 in 2035. If you look at the modeling, the predicted costs of solar and batteries in 2035, it will be a fraction of the cost of coal or nuclear or gas. It is worth noting that when the various governments, New South Wales, Victoria, Queensland, Commonwealth, from both sides of the political divide, made policy announcements saying renewables would be cheaper, the authors said that those predictions were reasonable at the time, but the world has changed significantly since then. Russia's invasion of Ukraine plunged global energy markets into turmoil, sparking a spike in power prices in Australia and also around the world. COVID disrupted global supply chains and the cost of building also soared. Nevertheless, the current trajectory is proving cheaper than the counterfactual. Currently, renewables are the cheapest form of energy in every country around the world, even cold countries where we don't get as much sun or rainy, I should say. This should come as no surprise. If there was a lower cost way, markets and investors would find it but they haven't. Renewables are the answer. Now, I know conspiracy theorists believe this is all mental and crazy. Usually, conspiracy theorists don't like facts. If you give them some modeling, some numbers, and some data, they look at you like you're crazy. What are your thoughts? Thanks for watching. The Sydney EV International Motor Show. If you want to get a 50% discount on your tickets, all you got to do, click the link in the description and use the promotion code that's in the description. Just copy and paste that. Now, I should mention there's only 200 tickets available per day. So if you go to use the promo code and you can't get a ticket, wait till the next day. Don't wait until the day before the show to get your tickets because otherwise you'll probably miss out on getting the 50% discount.